Hey, what's up guys? Josh here. And um, <clears throat> in this part of the video, we're going to make the uh, the stem. Now, unfortunately, this is, this is my third attempt at making this video. Um, both times, my GoPro, which I was using to record the whole series, is a GoPro Hero 8. It's one of the older ones, but it's, it's barely used. It's pretty much new. Um, it pretty much just overheated a couple times and corrupted the footage twice. Um, so I have two two stem blanks here that are just ready to use, uh, which is good. I mean, that's fine. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and make the video again here uh, so I can show you all how to make a stem with a Delrin tenon. Uh, that's an important detail. Usually, or not usually, some pipe makers, uh, if you have a metal lathe, it's, it's easier to make a pipe with a a good fitting or a well fitting ebonite tenon than it is uh, if you have a wood lathe. Um, so I have a wood lathe so I like to use Delrin. Delrin is very very precise in the diameter that it's made so uh, it's easy to use for beginners and the process of creating the stem blade, which is what we're going to do here it's not very difficult so I'll show you all how to do that now just for some housekeeping I'm smoking on uh, some old, not some old, but from 2021, February 2021, last year, so about a year, uh, or two years old, uh, the Beast from Cornell and Deal. Good stuff. Pretty strong, kind of cigar-like almost. Spicy. But we'll get started on this stem right now. Alright guys, so first thing you're gonna need is your material, your stock, your rod stock, which you can use ebonite, acrylic, this is ebonite, a raw piece, hasn't been touched yet, we're gonna go ahead and use that, and you can use, like I said, acrylic or eldritch, same process for each one, um, the only thing that might differ a little bit is the RPMs you want to use it. Uh, ebonite burns at a uh, you know, higher RPM than, let's say, Delrin, for instance, uh, can handle much higher speeds. So, let's get our piece of Delrin we have here. I'm using 0.25 inch uh, Delrin, quarter inch Delrin. I've already cut my piece here. It's about an inch and a quarter, maybe. And we have our piece of Ebonite here. So let's go ahead and get started. So. First of all, we're going to go ahead and drill the airway through the Delrin. So this this chuck is too, or it will not, uh, the jaws won't go down far enough to grip that Delrin at that diameter. So I'm going to take this off and just use a, uh, a, a drill chuck headstock. Get our piece of Delrin. Tighten it down there. First, let's go ahead and face it. drill so I'm gonna use a you want to use like a, a stubby drill bit for this one just because you you want it to have less uh, you know flex uh, you want it to be nice and uh, what's the word it's not it's not words not sturdy but uh, rigid uh, you know stiff here so we don't want it to bend and risk it going in at a, at a different angle my bad, sorry first we're gonna use one of these this tool, I'm not exactly sure what it is, what it's called. It's been a long time since I ordered it. 
but it essentially just gives you a starting a starting place for your drill bit. And these, since they're so short, like I said earlier, much more much more rigid. So you'll you know you're gonna get a perfectly centered starting point. Now we can go ahead and drill our airway. There you go. You'll feel it go through. Let me take this off here. I apologize about the shaky camera. And like I said, my the GoPro is not working, and um, I'm having to use this stand, which is kind of attached to my workbench. That's why it's wobbly. We're gonna go ahead and put some ridges in here now, so the epoxy has a place to grab onto. Let's turn this around and let's face the other side. Oops. Okay, so now we have our piece of quarter inch Delrin ready. This is going to be our tenon. And we'll put our chuck back on that has these tower jaws. That way it can grip small diameter objects like a piece of rock stick. So First thing we're gonna do is take a 1 16th inch bit. And we're gonna go ahead and drill into our ebonite just down to where the threads, or down to where the, uh, whatever these are called, the, 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 the threads here, as far as they go down, or the grooves, I mean. Let's go ahead and chuck this up. Same thing, we need to use one of these first. <clears throat> Get a starting point going. Okay, okay we have the uh, Ebonite here. Let's chuck this up. Same thing, let's go ahead and make a starting point right in the center that way our drill bit goes in perfectly and the reason why we're only going this far is because we're gonna use a taper drill bit and drill through the other side I'll show you right here in a second and the two the two they're gonna meet and this is gonna be where we funnel out our or funnel at the back of the, uh, or at the at the mouthpiece. You want to take ebonite a little bit slower and clear the the ribbons that come out. If you're getting a bunch of dust particles, it's, it's burning it. I'm not sure if that really makes a difference, but. So the, <clears throat> this is gonna be glued into here. 
about like that. <laughs> Okay, so that ten that I just made is just a shot across. I'm not gonna I'll find it right now in a second. I think I have a spare one right here. Yes, we have a spare one here. So ten is gonna be glued in about like like about like that. So let's go ahead and chuck this up, face it, or we'll chuck it up. Um, use our quarter inch drill bit to drill a mortise into here and then we're going to create some grooves inside that mortise so that glue can stick just like on the just like on the, the other side of the tenon and my quarter inch drill bit here I already have tape measured uh, where I want both the tenon length as well as the, the mortise length or depth rather Now let's face it with an actual Forstner bit. Make sure we get a completely um, perpendicular. You want the airway to be completely perpendicular to this face here. That's what we use the Forstner bit. Or else you'll get those light gaps that sometimes happen. have it really close to it at first just to ease on to it and once you're sure that it's made contact with that whole round surface you're fine which I can tell that it has just by the the marks here I'll take this off here and show you what I mean as you can see there's round marks all uh, all around so if the force bit hadn't touched a piece of that it would be missing that line <clears throat> All right, so let's go ahead and create the grooves inside that mortise. Okay guys, so here we have a, a slightly different view, or a completely different view. Um, what you're going to want to use is, is a tool like this. Now I made this uh, especially just for this exact... Um, Part of the process just out of a screwdriver head uh, a Phillips screwdriver just made a little, like a little hook device as you can see there it's sharp and it creates a divot sort of like the ones that we did in the you know the tin in there so let's go ahead and focus back on this And you'll be able to see them. I like to create two, two good ones. It depends. Remember also how may, how thin your diameter of your stem is. That's going to also affect how deep of these ridges you can create.
So now we have a clean inside there. If you put the epoxy inside there with all that ebonite dust, it's not gonna stick. Um, it'll, you, it'll, it'll come right out. So go ahead and get this. We get our little epoxy cup here. And for this part, let's remove this Forstner bit. Sorry, but sorry you guys for the shaky camera. And we're gonna get our chuck. And we're gonna get it all the way closed down so there's a nice flat surface here to press the stem into the, <clears throat> or to press the tenon into the, the mortise here. So let's get our epoxy ready. I like to use, you like to use this one? I've used uh, probably two, two sets of these or three sets of these over about a year period. So, I mean, they come in very, very handy. And it's uh, pretty cheap. It's like 15 bucks, like a Vermont 300, something, something like that. I'm not sure the exact price. I haven't bought them in a while. I'm trying to find a mixing. All right, guys, now we're gonna let this set for about 20, 30 minutes, because we're gonna drill through there with the tapered drill bit to meet the hole on the other side that we made with the 1 16th drill bit. Uh, so what we can go ahead and do is move this back. You don't need to wait. Um, I would say wait about, I like I said, I used a five minute epoxy, but it's since it's inside this hole you've drilled in the tenon, uh, the airway, um, it's gonna take longer to dry than that. So wait about, I'd say about 30 minutes, and then you can go ahead and, I'd say 30 to 45 minutes, and then we can drill out our, um, the rest of our airway using the tapered drill that we've already marked with our tape. Um, let me see here. Yeah, I marked it here. I didn't take into account the length of the tenon, so that's okay. We can just go ahead and, the tenon is definitely not gonna be this long. So <clears throat> we'll go ahead and remove some right now. This is a little trick I like to use. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. Uh, you can do it however you'd like. Um, this tool here, like I said, I don't remember the name, but it creates, if you use it this way, You don't, want to, you don't want to apply too much pressure because your tenon could break. You do it just slowly. So if you do it that way, it creates a tapered, or a ch rather a, like a chamfer around the edge of the uh, 
110 in there because it's a just the just the angle of it uh, the more 45 degree angle this is the more it'll create a you know a good a good chamfer on it so that's a good length right there let's go ahead and add that onto here so we were here last time so we want to be about right here yeah so the tape was was good the first time I think let's see here So about right there is good. Let's chuck it back up and let's turn it on, turn the lathe on. You wanna make sure that it's still centered, which it's could be a little bit better. This is just a get, kind of a guessing game. Like I said, there we go, it's centered up. Um, if I would have uh, taken into account the length of the tenon before, I wouldn't have had to do that. So that was just a, kind of a brain fart uh, happens, you know. So let's go ahead and slowly start getting this drill done. Now, there's that epoxy. You'll slowly start seeing some ebonite mixed in. You want to clear those chips out of the way, or not chips, but dust, shavings, and uh, it'll cause a lot of friction if you don't, and it'll melt the other night. Now let, let's just check here that we've gone all the way through and met that other hole that was on the other side that we made. Let's just get a one of these. You can. This is a very bent one that I beat up a lot, but I have some new ones here. Um, Let's check that we've gone all the way through there. Yep, so as you can see, it comes out the other side. Perfect, that's exactly what we want. So we're done with uh, the, or actually, let's go ahead and get this down to diameter as well. So, oh, I thought that was my dog. It's the dog next door. So for this pipe, as you can see, the diameter is decent. You know, it, it's, it's actually around the same right now. So I'm, I'm, I'm not going to take off very much. I'm just going to uh, go ahead and make it concentric. Usually it's good to take off like the top, the top layer of the ebonite before you start working it. it has imperfections and whatnot. That's fine right there. All right, so that's pretty much it, guys, for this one. Um, other than that, let's. Well, actually, the last step. Let's go ahead and make sure it fits with the pipe. Okay. So as you can see, there's a gap. So it's just not completely flush. So let's go ahead and take it out. And this we do as well, just a little bit at a time. creating that chamfer again. Let's test it out again. Almost there, it's just like a hair. No light gap, and that's exactly what we want. So let's go ahead and uncheck this. 
the heck? Somebody just fell in my workshop. All right, so here we go. We have this down. As you can see, it's it's off center, but that's okay. We're, we're still gonna work this down into this and make it slightly, slightly bent. And it's gonna, I think it's gonna look elegant. Um, so that's what we'll do on the next one. On the next one, we'll go ahead and rough shape the whole pipe together with this attached uh, and see where we uh, end up. All right, thanks guys. Thanks for watching, stay piping.